In this video, you'll learn how to get this dreamy waterfall maternity photo. So stay tuned. Hey everyone, it's Reese here from My Big Camera. Today, we'll be showing you how to get a beautiful portrait using these dreamy waterfalls in the background. If you're new to our channel, we post videos that help you become a better portrait photographer. So make sure you subscribe to see more content just like this. And make sure you hit that bell icon to be notified whenever there's a new video. So how do we achieve this? We achieve this by doing two exposures. One long exposure and one short exposure. The long one is to make the waterfalls dreamy. The second photo is done with a short exposure so that we get the model in and then we combine them in Photoshop. Make sure you stay tuned all the way to the end because we'll be taking you right into Photoshop to show you how to combine them. Now, you might be asking, why can't we just put the model in there on the long exposure? Now, you could, but if the model moves the tiniest bit, she'll become blurry. Combining long exposures and short exposures is done quite often because the slightest breeze can make a leaf blow and then make it blurry in the photo. The only thing that we want blurry is the water. We want it as creamy as possible. So to fix that, photographers take two photos, a long exposure and a short exposure. In Photoshop, you can put these two together and delete out the blurry parts that you don't want blurry. So what we're going to do is first test both exposures to make sure we know our settings before taking the actual shots. Then we will pose the model in the spot we would like her to be in, somewhere where she won't be in front of the waterfall at all since that would make it a bit challenging to combine the images. I will then manually focus on her so that when she moves out of the shot, my focus stays on the same spot. For reference, I'm using the Canon 50mm 1.2L lens, but you can use any lens that you prefer. In order to take a long exposure, I'm using a variable ND filter. The ND filter allows us to take wider apertures at lower shutter speeds for the amount of light that's coming in. After testing my settings, I've determined that my ISO will be at 125 and that my aperture will be 2.8. We've set the shutter to four seconds. To be able to have the shutter open for that long, I'm using a tripod. The tripod is gonna make sure that the, photo, or the camera stays in a relatively stable position. First, I'm gonna take the short exposure photo with my model, after which I'm gonna tell her to get out and then take the long exposure. Okay, so what you wanna do here is manually focus on the model. So that when she moves out of the shot for the long exposure photo, your focal point will be the same. Use the same aperture of 2.8 and then adjust your shutter speed and ISO to properly expose the photo. You can see in the photo how sharp the water looks and how distracting it is in the photo. Once you've taken your photo, ask the model to move out of the shot. Now you would just set your settings to what we established earlier on. Turn the ND filter ring to the setting that worked during your test photo. Hit the shutter button to set off the timer to take the photo. Check to make sure the image is properly exposed and that you have the desired amount of blur in the water. If it's too dark, adjust your ND filter ring and try again. Okay, now let's bring these into Photoshop. Okay, so here we are in my computer in Photoshop. I have the two images open, the long exposure shot of the waterfalls and the short exposure with the model. You should first edit the images in Lightroom or Adobe Raw to match your editing style. Try to get the images to look as similar to each other as possible. You're not going to be able to get them looking exactly the same, but just try to match the exposure and colors as best as you can. You then select your long exposure waterfall image by going up to select and then all. Then go to the edit menu and go to copy. Then select your image of the model and go to edit and then paste. You can see the two layers here. Now select both layers by clicking on both of them while holding down the control key on your keyboard. You can see that both layers are selected here in the layers panel. Now go over to the edit menu and click on auto align layers. Make sure auto is selected and then click OK. What this will do is match the layers on top of each other so they're perfectly aligned with one another and then you can easily mask out parts of the top image. 
this feature works great for head swaps too. Now we're going to select the top layer with the model and create a mask by clicking on the mask tool here. Make sure our top color is set to black and select the paintbrush tool. Make sure the opacity is set to 100% and with a large soft brush just mask your model back into the photo. Here's a quick before and after. Pretty cool, eh? Now zoom in and go in with a smaller brush to polish up your mask around the edges. I'm just basically switching back and forth between the black and white brushes to make sure that only the model is masked out of the top layer. It doesn't need to be perfect, but pay particular close attention to all of the water areas so you retain that blurred water effect. I'm sure there's a much better way of selecting the model using the quick selection tool, but I prefer to do it this way. Especially since aside from the water, there shouldn't be too much of a difference between the photos since we shot them both at f2.8. So your mask really doesn't need to be perfect. I will zoom out and here is the before and after. Now that we have our mask complete, we can flatten the layers and crop it to get rid of the edges where the two layers overlapped. Okay, so this part is totally optional, but I'm going to clean up the water a bit to get rid of some of these sticks and debris, just to make the water look a little nicer and cleaner. I'm using the lasso tool to select what I want removed and then hitting delete on my keyboard set at content aware to delete the object. It does a pretty good job, but I'm going to just go in with the clone tool to clean it up a bit. Now I'm using the spot healing brush to get rid of a few more smaller areas. You can really just skip doing all of this if you want. Now you could just finish editing the photo the way you normally would. I'm going to reduce the greens then I'm going to use levels to darken the shadows of the image slightly and then I'm going to darken the waterfalls a bit by using a dodge and burn action you can also just use the burn tool I'm just doing it at 10% opacity That's pretty much it. I would probably tweak the image a little bit more, but I just wanted to mostly show you how to combine the images because everyone has their own style when it comes to editing. That's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it helpful. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you know when the next video comes up. Thank you to our model for, uh, for braving the elements in that nice cold water. And I hope you have a great day and make sure you keep creating.